Today on the show, we found the 11 most popular conspiracies, and we're gonna see just how many of those blue context boxes YouTube will put at the bottom of our video. What's something weird that our family does that we've never seen any other family do? And we rank Christian bands from the 90s, my ranking versus Josh's ranking. Let's see just how heated this gets. All this and more on the best episode nine of the Blimey Cow Podcast. Hello everybody, welcome to the Blimey Cow Podcast. My name is Josh. And I am Jordan. Every Friday, we put out another episode of this podcast, and this is episode number nine. Thank you all so much for being here We've today. got a lot of great feedback, Josh, and last week, we did a little bit of a dumb thing. We forgot to do the question of the week. I know. We, I, I posted it in the in the comment section, and we got enough to keep that segment going. Oh, good. Okay? It's we, not canceled. We didn't murder it. Oh, hey, and thanks so much to our supporters at supportblimeycow.com this week. Special shout out to Andy Scholes. I'm hoping that by the time we release this, I will have permission to, to share this information, but we have our very first international blimey cowpole that is getting married. International blimey cowpole. Oh, okay. We've had many marriages okay. in the cow movie. We, many marriages. And we have our first international one. It is Karis and Josh. Yeah, actually, they came over to my house. Uh, Was that six months ago or 18 months ago. Who knows oh, anymore? Really? They came over, we played some board games. I guess that was the first time they'd ever hung out was that week when they were here in town. Oh, uh, because, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, because Karis is from out of the country. So anyways, congratulations, guys. Congratulations. I, I will officiate your wedding. Last week in the comments section, we asked you guys, what is something weird your family does that you've never seen any other family do? Uh, <laughs> Such a shame we didn't put that in the actual I video, know, too. I know, but we did get some good comments. This one is from Jalen Cassidy. He says, cheddar cheese on our apple pie, and we always have to say, apple pie without cheese is like a kid without a squeeze when we do it. <laughs> I didn't. I don't know what that means. We won't ask, but all right. <laughs> Xav Xav says we defenstrate. That kind which of reminded me of defecate. Yeah. Josh. Well, do you know what defenstrate means? No. I've. I never meant to seen look that. it up before we started recording. Let's just imagine that defenstrate is maybe like when you trash your tree but like in the way that you're supposed to because you're not supposed to just throw them away they're flammable and let's just both agree together that that this should not be a word <laughs> we occasionally leave rocks from our driveway in random parking lots and track how long they stay there okay this only happened once but six years most recently we established a traveling wordle trophy so that's kind of a fun idea like Wait, just what do they do they put random pieces of gravel from their driveway into random, in random places, places and, and every time they went there they would just look and see is it still there <laughs> Putting your mark down, <laughs> defenstrating. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's what defenstrating, defenstrating means. Defenstrating, defenstrating means you 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 drop <laughs> some gravel <laughs> and see how long it stays. Okay. All right, uh, Jordan. <laughs> do you have something? I have something that our family oh. did. And okay. if you can't think of something, I'll just speak for both of us. But, well, let's say yours, and then okay. Wolf. Well, I don't think I've ever known a family other than ours that eats. Thanksgiving out in the living room, just sitting on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> every, yeah, once, right. every once in a while, we will all pile around that table, but especially now with the the, the, the family just continuing to grow, uh, we mostly just uh, yeah. sit out in the living room. We just watch. We, we don't watch TV or anything. Okay, we're not heathens, but we do sit out and uh, sit yeah. out on the couch because it's more comfy than sitting at the table. Our family loves each other. Yeah, that is that is a, a rarity. <laughs> other people just demonstrate on each other. All right, Jordan, what is our question this week? It's a big one. I'm going to read it for the first time. Okay. Would you rather be able to instantly learn new skills or instantly learn new languages? All right, next if, week, we think about it and we'll talk about it. Well, learning a new language is like learning a skill. Okay, but uh, they're, say they're different things. Okay. Okay, I'm talking about like a vocational skill. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. like woodworking, things like that. Is Would you rather l be able to learn to woodwork or code or things? Or would you rather just be able to instantly say, I know Spanish, I know Kung Fu. <laughs> okay? Gotcha. All right. Christian memes, here we go. For some reason, I don't think that mine is gonna make you laugh, but it really made me laugh I, for some reason. You know, I know when you have no faith in yours because it's when you add two to the uh, to our doc. <laughs> yes. Well, they a, always a make yeah, they always make me laugh. But you ready for mine? Yeah. Is, is yours funny? Is it gonna? Be funny? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like a little bit of something for me, a little bit of something for you. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Alex Jones doesn't take me as a North Face guy. He's wearing North Face. You know, Face that's funny. Polo. That was something I noticed, too, when I saw really? this. Like, yeah, he doesn't seem like that. Make sure you buy North Face. <laughs> Ever since I started using North Face shirts, my health <laughs> increased dramatically. The women flocked to me. All right, here we go. This one actually kind of goes with my deep thought later. Now, <laughs> wait, it keeps going. It's not going to come back, is it? <laughs> it just oh, my back. word. No way. <laughs> no way. That's not real. No, it is. It's just on a line, and I think it just does a circle and comes oh, back. Oh, okay. But it's I was like, like I how did it? Oh, it's, it's not a Catholic church, uh, but we do know a church uh, around here that shoots off fireworks yeah, uh, around this the, time of year. They have the biggest indoor fireworks show in the country. Which I didn't know was legal. It's probably not, but they give so much money to the to the city <laughs> legitimately. Maybe, maybe we should talk about this. I don't want to disparage it. I don't know if I know anybody that goes to no, that church. No, I've been there. It seems <laughs> oh, okay. like a nice place. I mean, I went there for quite a while. I saw. I've been there to the show. Oh, okay, all right. I just I just heard about it. No, they do a lot like, of. There's no way they do a ton of community work. Yeah, Crazy. All right, all right, all right. I'm not making fun of them. I'm just right. you know. Cat, cat on the side. <laughs> now josh we've got a new game that i came up with so let's see if it's good you normally come up with the games but today it's my turn. i was so happy here we go i have this thing that I have extreme high facial recognition. There's this test you can take to see if you can get a job being a facial recognition expert. Okay. And there's like high end jobs that you can get. And so there's like this first test that you have to take. And if you pass that test, then you have the chance to take these other tests. Okay. So I passed the first test. Josh has not taken the test. Sometimes when I'm watching shows or just seeing people in real life, I just immediately know that they look like an actor or an actress. And you guys know, I don't even know the names of actors and actresses, but they, their faces pop into my head. So I wanna see if when I show you these pictures here of these actors, if you can tell me what other person they look like. I'm gonna make this an easy one. If you can't get this, Okay. I will be so disappointed. Right, I'm ready. I was watching Little House on the Prairie the other day and this yes. person popped up and yes. I was like, it's just insane just how much she looks like her. Okay, here we go. Uh, okay. Looks like uh, Thelma Lou from Andy Griffith's show. That is who it is. Oh, that's But who I'm going to go even one step deeper. <laughs> who does Thelma Lou from... Oh, she looks An like Anne of Green Gables. Dude, exactly <laughs> like her. Look at this. Wow. I mean, it is the spitting image the of spitting her. image. So much so that I thought that they... Perhaps a mother. Were related. Yeah, like... A cousin. Because it looks that much. I mean, look at that. I just can't... It blows my mind every time. I'm ready for my next test. Okay. I need a backup plan. Too. That uh, That's a hard one. Hang if on. If you're out of a job, I am too. <laughs> okay, Josh, this next one comes from the show The Nanny, our mother's... One of our mother's favorite shows. Your favorite too. My favorite too. Sarah has been watching it. I noticed Mr. Sheffield, and uh -huh. I thought he looks exactly like... Uh, I don't know who he that looks, looks like. He looks like an actor. Okay. Um, okay, if you can't guess, then we'll move on to his son. Because his okay. son and show him me, look similar. Show me the boy. Similar. Show me the boy. This is his son in the show, the nanny. Ryan Gosling? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Ryan Gosling himself. I mean, it's uncanny. <laughs> what in the world? When I saw the dad, I thought, oh, this looks like Ryan Gosling. But then I thought, oh, but the son looks just like the dad. And I was like, wait, the son looks even more like Ryan Gosling. The face shape is the I same. Nose the same. All right, now, Josh, this was a random YouTube short that popped up about Spanish and he looks like a mixture of two people but more so like you would guess it with just one person is it a musician this is a youtuber he looks like another youtuber uh, Shane Dawson no but Josh he does look like okay Josh actually let's mix Shane Dawson with this other person uh, that I'm talking uh, about. Philip DeFranco no um, <laughs> you just naming YouTubers. <laughs> Lacey Green. <laughs> Josh has a dark past. <laughs> All right, I'm just, I'm just naming a lot of boomer. Okay, hang YouTubers. on. Don't don't look. I could say blimey cow. That's true. Mr. Hey, there Beast. It is. 
but mixed with Shane Dawson. I, I do think that his it, he does look a bit like Shane Dawson. He does. He's got the Shane Dawson. When I first saw this guy, I yeah. thought 100% this guy is a mixture of me and Mr. Beast. No look! Way. Look at this guy. Look at his eyes. Yeah, I can. Uh, yeah. It's, if it's, you morphed us together, yeah. it would create this man. I have to know what is this high-end job it's where like the skill is helpful. It's like <laughs> it's like government positions where you have to look at surveillance. I have to work for the and government. To, pretty for much this high-end job. But tell me that this guy does not look like me and him combined. I'm not telling you that because it's true. <laughs> okay, it's true. Do you get paid even more if this kind of thing is exciting to you? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Okay, you <laughs> did. <laughs> no, I think you would get paid a little Dude, it more. It just than excites me, me. every time. I, it just this connection <laughs> in my brain. So you can maybe get the government <clears throat> positions too, and get paid an amazing pension after you retire. I had to, I got to do my taxes this week. <laughs> I, put, I always I always think I'm not gonna file an extension, and then I filed it. God help me! But now I'm realizing. Wait, I gotta I gotta do my taxes before the baby comes, or else I'm gonna oh. have to do taxes before yeah, this yeah, kid yeah. is two months old. I was like, I gotta do it now. I gotta do it this week. Let me tell you something. <laughs> if everybody had to do taxes the way that people that are self-employed have to do taxes, yeah, you wouldn't. There would be no taxes. There would be <laughs> none. Okay. Yeah. We have to send in a check. Go ask somebody who works for themselves that you know. They have to send in a check every quarter, every three months to the government because they don't get their taxes taken out of their paycheck, okay? So every month you're just writing a check to the government, just hoping yeah. that you're right. And then at the end of the year, you file all your taxes. It's the most complicated, confusing thing because you gotta keep all your receipts and all this stuff. And then you find right. out, was I right? Or yeah. do I owe more? There's no, oh, I no. got a, I got a three, th thanks government, I got $3,000 bonus this year. No, they, yeah, and it's way more than you would think, like, <laughs> it's shocking. The percentage is shocking, I should say. Yeah. Let's answer a message. Now, Josh, normally I pre-read these, uh, and I haven't this time. You want me to read it, or you want to read it? It's on your paper, not mine. These are these are my notes. Oh, oh, those are your notes. These are just my notes, okay? I have three pages of notes. You have three pages of notes? No, I mean, kind of. Dang, I wish it's I had just, some. Well, look, you know, you are more gifted. At what? At just kind of being able to talk off the fly. I get really scared and flustered. I feel like you're better at it than I am. Uh -oh. I, it's just in your uh -oh. head. All right. Uh-oh, uh -oh. <laughs> Josh's brain's glitching. Dear Jordan and Josh, my dad wants me to get a boyfriend and it's really awkward. This is like no other message we've ever read. <laughs> My siblings both are in relationships. I am the youngest, 16. For a while now, my dad started making jokes about how I should get a boyfriend too and which one of my guy friends it will be. At first, I thought he was just joking, but it has carried on for a bit too long. I personally feel that I am not ready for a relationship, even though I am nearly 17. I think I am too young and not in the correct mental state for that stuff. I don't know what to do. Please help me. Hannah, P.S. I love the podcast. It's the highlight of my week. Wow. We are nine weeks in to creating the highlighter for a week. It's amazing. I always want to say congratulations on the healthy relationship with your family. I feel like that's a really rare thing for a <laughs> father to be like, are you gonna are you gonna get a boyfriend soon? Like, you know what I mean? I feel like my, that's a <laughs> my most generous reading of this, I'm trying to put myself in this mindset. Look like, and I, I think as a father, yeah, as, as a father, and I think I would never do this, obviously, because no. this is kind of a weird thing to it do. It is weird. But if I were to do it, I think it it would be because I was worried my kid was antisocial, like too shy or something. Like, hey, why don't you go out and so there's meet some people? Yeah. Get a, you know what I mean? So that's, but even still, is forcing it going to create a quality relationship here? I mean, no, but I think that you're probably right. Maybe he is, uh, maybe he is a little worried that she needs to get a, get out more or something. Yeah. And we could be, to I mean, completely wrong. We read he so could, much he into could messages, just be like, but... He could just be something like, I don't care, just get him out of the house! Get him, yeah, marry it could him be off, that, go! Yeah. Get out of here! But if it was that, it's gone on for a little too long. So now she's saying, now the joke is becoming more of a truth and a reality that she's like, oh, dad's not just joking. He actually wants me to find somebody. But you know what? I think that that's actually, I can see reading this and thinking, wow, this this father is kind of much. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> why would he much. do this? But if you imagine if you had a 16 year old or if I had a 16 year old or a 17 year old girl and it didn't seem like they had any like, 
prospects or like they weren't really looking that hard and you had faith in your daughter as being like a good person is not gonna you would I would definitely be like, hey, so like, I just want to let you know it's okay if you yeah, like find yeah, somebody to, and want to be yeah, with them. Yeah, don't don't well, feel like we're trying holding you back. That that you know what I can see that too because there is sort of this, uh, especially depending on how you grew up, sort of situation where you think, you know what, I felt a lot of pressure from my parents to not date. Yes, exactly. Whatever. So I will, I don't want to put that on my child. Yeah. So 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 let me go, <laughs> let me swing too far in the other direction now and make it a little awkward. Yeah, make it a little awkward. So uh, you just say, hey, look, I I appreciate the sentiment, but this is kind of stressing me out. Don't please, just yeah. don't worry about me. I'm gonna be okay. Yeah. I have high standards because you're my dad, <laughs> <laughs> and I want a man like you. <laughs> okay. I, I just found when I read this that I actually really liked the dad, and I feel like even if he's swinging too much into the in, into this direction, that if most parents could just swing a little bit into that direction, <laughs> th- everything would be okay for we us. We would get like here. half the messages that we get. I feel like exactly. I, oh, every other message I uh, when I'm reading through them is like, I I really really like this guy, but my parents would not ninety nine percent of messages. want me to yeah so. So this is a breath of fresh air. And I think later on in life, I think you're going to look back at this and realize, wow, I'm actually glad that my dad was more like this than what some of my other Christian friends have to go through. Mm Mm-hmm. And and you'll appreciate it in some weird way. You know, I there was a a kid that we knew that was like, your dad and mom don't let you date. And dad was standing right there. And I was, and I was, I didn't say anything. And he was like, I never said he couldn't date. And she was like, well, well, he doesn't have a girlfriend. And Mm -hmm. he was like, yeah, because he doesn't want to have a girlfriend. Yeah. And I was like, I mean, (laughs) I I wouldn't hate it, but yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. It's It's like, 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 when you're 16, what do you, like, what are you going to do other than get into trouble? Yeah, exactly. That's what I appreciated about how we grew up was that it it wasn't like there, there wasn't like this hard, fast rule for much of anything. Yeah. It was just... We all just kind of lived the same way and like had the same culture that we did. It wasn't even something that was like, hey, dad, can I have a girlfriend? It yeah. was like, <laughs> I, I should like, what's the point right now? You know what I mean? So right. like, it wasn't, it wasn't this big ordeal. It also helped that I've only ever had like three eras of my life as we talked about before. <laughs> we have show. talked about it's this. It's not like I, every week I was like, oh, now I like this girl. Oh, but no. I can't date. It was like, man, if, if even one of these girls would ever... Date me. If I would date as soon as they said yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. And that, you know, didn't work out until I was in college. So Right. But okay. then for worked out for the best. But then for me, like when I was getting to that age where, you know, I would hang out with girls more, there was never a time when dad was like, Yeah, no, you can't like not even a thought. I didn't even think. I just said, Okay, I'm mature enough now that obviously dad is going to like respect this. Yeah. And he did. It yeah. wasn't I don't know. That's just mom and dad would drive. Like if we were like, I want to go to so and so's youth group, and it was like on the other end of town, they would just drive us. No question. No question. I was like, you, yeah, you know, you know why I'm. <laughs> we're going this far, right? And it's not for Jesus. <laughs> yeah, you know. they knew. They knew. They knew. And they didn't say anything. We are going to create our own tier list of 1990s Christian bands. And if oh. we disagree on one, we're going to average out what we where we would put them. Okay, that's Are fine. you ready for this? Yeah. Uh, we're going to start with Out of Eden, classic uh, sister band, Out of Eden. Oh, man. Okay, thank you. Uh, when we were doing the game a few weeks back uh-huh. where we were playing songs and figuring out if the other person could guess the song, yeah. I was going to do one for you of... Out of Eden, but I could not for the life of me remember the name of it. I didn't know how to search it. Lovely day, lovely day. Uh, you know what? Honestly, I liked one or two of their songs. Was never a huge fan. I, but I, 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 I they're fine. I would put them at like C. I would. I mean, I don't even remember them much at all. So I'll say D. Okay. Well, we'll default to the D then. Sorry, okay. Out of Eden. Sorry, Out of Eden. It's not that we don't like you. It's just we don't remember you that much. What about Newsboys, Jordan? Oh. We're talking classic Newsboys. Oh, okay. You know, I think that Spotify needs to differentiate because you yes. have to scroll. I'm like, look, you know what I'm trying to get to. Yeah, when come I- on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I click Newsboys. I mean, to me, this is S tier. Like, this is, this is probably A tier for you. Uh, I, I'll give them S tier. Okay. I'll give Newsboys S tier. I mean, if you're talking about Entertaining Angel, stepping up to the microphone, Look, it, I mean... It's iconic that, song after iconic song. <clears throat> yeah. Point of you Grace. Are Lord of 
Hi. This is Amy's band, our sister. I never liked this band. I don't Not remember them. I don't remember listening to them much. Uh, for Amy's sake, I'll say D. I'll say F. F. Okay. Sorry, Amy. <laughs> Sorry, Amy. All right, Switchfoot. I mean, for me, that's got to be S tier. Yeah, I would say They're S still tier. making <clears throat> classic albums. Are they really? Oh, yeah, I haven't. Dude. All right, what about Audio Adrenaline? Um, big, big house. I don't want to just throw everything at S tier. I, like, but, so I'm gonna I don't s- think Audio Adrenaline I'm gonna is S tier. I would say A. I, they I, had, I, they would go, s- I would go B. So Do B. All right. We'll, we'll go with B. Uh, Cademan's Call. Now, Cademan's Call, they had some really classic albums, and they kind of did that worship thing, but here's the thing. I like those worship albums. Like they they, really. they wrote some actually good. Like they didn't just cover. They did some good. I mean, I got to put this S, but I know you're not going to put Cabin's Call S tier. I didn't listen to them too much. I mean, I That's did fine. a little bit. I would say A. You would give them a, I, wow. No, they had some Look, all it takes for me to beat somebody in A tier <laughs> is a song that really impacted me a lot and they have at least one song that what, impacted me. What what song is that? I don't even remember, but if you played a Cadman's Call song, it, it, pull up a Cadman's Call. There's one song that's just Yes, yes this is what makes <laughs> it this is what makes it A tier. <laughs> Sorry to Derek Webb. I tried to get you S tier, bro. <laughs> PFR? You remember PFR? No. Why didn't I go to such greater lengths to... S tier. <laughs> no, I'll you know, say they, B. They I'll say some, B. They, B. I'll go B too. Okay. I, I think they have some classic songs, but I, 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 I don't know them as well. Jars of Clay, I mean, hard not to give them S tier. It's gotta well, be S tier. You give them S tier? Yeah. All right. I've seen them more times than you've seen them play live. Probably fair enough. I've seen them two times live. I even saw their Christmas special, Josh. Wow, the Christmas special. That you had special. to pay for. I didn't pay for it. I went over to somebody's house who was paying for oh, okay. it. Oh, okay. That well, was, it was like a pay-per-view the, thing? Oh, well, that was the, the during the times? Yeah. Okay. Wow. I, I have not paid for a, a digital... <laughs> COVID <laughs> thing. I never it never came to that for me, but I respect the hustle. All Star United. You remember that band? Wisco for Disco. Gotta that is a good song. Now. Okay. But they only had to put out two albums, but they yeah. were both really good. We're agreeing too much. Let's it's get fine. some controversy. How about Earth Suit? S tier. I mean, there's no <laughs> question. Not even there's no question. Flipping question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what about DC Talk? Now, Jordan, this could get a little testy because you recently said on the podcast that you thought they didn't hold up. No, you... Okay. Oh, God help us, Josh. That's the last thing that I said. I did not say if, if that... That's exactly what you said. No, what I said was that when they came out and did their little cruise thing, yeah. it was a, it just felt weird to me. It didn't. The songs were still amazing. Oh, okay. But it felt like some dudes who didn't really like each other that much anymore <laughs> were doing this on stage and they didn't really necessarily believe what they were singing anymore. So the songs, I still listen to these songs all the time. S tier. S tier. What if like 30 years from now, people got on a boat and wanted us to perform like <laughs> Seven Lies About Homeschoolers? Do you think we would like still be into it the same way? I think I would. Dude, if that happened, that'd be a dream. I'd be like, I can't believe we just got paid hundreds of thousands of dollars. (laughs) We will happily do this song and dance. No, I feel like that would be awesome. Jordan, what about Third Day? We have to think about Mom. I know, but we didn't think about Amy. We didn't. (laughs) It's either going to be F or S. And I can't decide. I don't. I'm kidding, Josh. I'm kidding. I I would go B or C. I I like their earlier stuff better. I think I'm going to go C. Sorry, Mom. It's, It's on the weight of the overall catalog i'll say b but go see all right okay here it is this is the tier list so the classics are newsboy switchfoot jars of clay earth suit and dc talk it look and it, it creates an f <laughs> so they all are bad which is what <laughs> what uh i shouldn't say it just say it we might m- mom might have Absent. something to say about <laughs> third day being c tier <laughs> and it might be in the shape of such a letter but she wouldn't she wouldn't <laughs> jordan let's talk about some deep thoughts <laughs> cathedrals man i was What's just all about? i was this this is the thing josh when we see these cathedrals we think these things whoever built these had this incredible mathematical knowledge and like their capability to for engineering is just incredible but the thing is josh they didn't know as much as we think that they knew everything back then that they knew was pretty much trial and error really so like they were building these that you know you build a small church and it's like okay well that that held up that worked let's make it bigger 
Okay, let's make it oh. bigger. And, oh, oh, that one fell. Okay, well, let's tweak <laughs> this and make it bigger and do this. And, and, and so they didn't necessarily know if this thing, if these were, if there were plenty of things that they built That's that so kind of fell. And at some point, they just got really good at figuring out how to build this certain... Uh, this this certain style and they they just knew that it worked but the the concept the the mathematical and and, and physical concept of uh like the tension and the strain uh, that certain materials can hold and load without breaking and under like what angle that wasn't really developed until like the 1600s huh when people started to do those tests to actually put n direct numbers to these things. In some way, it was a bit like when I'm, again, the underground doghouse. I don't know the numbers behind how many rebar do I have to put yeah. in per square inch of this slab so that th the roof doesn't cave in. Yeah. I just know, okay, like every six inches, I mean, like it's a strong structure, so yeah. you just overdo it. And it holds, and and there I don't know the math behind it, even though I could look it you up now. Everybody, they're crimping off the work that other people have done in the yes. past. Yeah, I was just reading this in a book called Structures or Why Things Don't Fall, and I think <laughs> actually Elon Musk uh, was is one book that inspired him. It's weird because those buildings were so beautiful, and now we build structures that aren't really beautiful anymore necessarily. But we understand all of the math behind right. it. Right. <laughs> but we don't. But so it's like we've 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 swung way far the other way, where it's like, oh, now we know the math. Well, the, the, this doesn't the 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 aesthetic of it doesn't matter too much. Everybody is terrified to make something that's classically beautiful because there's it's going to be viewed as like goofy or old fashioned or corny or something. Maybe. But but and so what they do instead is sometimes they just make these really funky, weird structures because if you make something that's so outlandish, then you can't question because it it's like, well, this it's it's a piece of art. Yeah. That's what always makes me mad about modern architecture it's either just completely dull or it's just obnoxious and it's like you can't ex that, that's yeah. not artistic that's just a joke i can go look at cathedrals and buildings that were built hundreds of years ago and say this is just like i don't i can't explain it yeah but I, but my eye and my brain just recognizes that's beautiful this is a piece of crap i'm not saying that they didn't understand any math they clearly understood math but they didn't know calculus that wasn't developed yet yeah. until that was i think that was developed by like isaac newton and some other dude at around the same time or at the same time so they're kind of like co-owners of that mm -hmm. uh, but that was in the 1600s and these were built in like 1000 ad so I, I mean and you would think that you would have to know that to build it but they're just building stuff Isn't and that it's holding you didn't have building materials like uh like machines and stuff this so it was like trial and error, and you're having to do it all by hand. It's crazy, and and they're so skilled that they're able to like carve statues and really like these arcs and structures, and it's just working. I don't want to make these people sound like they are just idiots and they're just fumbling into what no, they're no, doing. No, 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 you're, you're. That's not what it sounds like you're saying at all. It's I almost think, to me more impressive what than I'm what saying. we do that's now. That's what I'm. That's why I'm talking yeah. about like crimping off other people's work. It's like we're not, we're not geniuses. We just are lucky that other people did the work before we got here. So yeah. to have any sort of like level of hubris or, or arrogance about our mm. place in the world is, is ridiculous because... That was truly a generational learning. Right. Now it's like, okay, we can read... But because and, we can, we have access to that stuff, it's like nothing matters anymore. Yeah, you we don't I mean? need like, them well, anymore. Well, we, 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 need... we can access that if we need it, but because yeah. we have access to everything, we can just do whatever we want. Yeah. Maybe that's why I think Maybe in the short term, but not then. in the long term. And now I want to make you sad. We were talking the other week on the podcast about the idea of pop music and how it just feels like like an AI. Yeah, Mr. It's, Beast's mouth, mouth open. With the, yeah, that's right. It's like when you watch that's a his. Mr. Beast video, it feels like you're just watching the most optimal thing to make you keep watching. It's like he's done the research, he's done yeah. the work to figure out how to keep your eyes glued and so you're just watching a robotic thing. So then we were watching we were associating AI like if AI is like a Mr. Beast video, what is it like in it, the rest of the world? It's like watching it's it's like listening to pop music. It's like it doesn't feel like there's much passion behind it. It just feels like a product that's being 
this is supposed to be something that you'll like. So here it is. Yeah. Okay. Jordan. So what is this? A robot could be coming for the job of prominent music producers and talent show judges like Simon Cowell, according to new research. Scientists have utilized artificial intelligence to identify hit pop songs with an impressive 97% accuracy. They're saying in the future, an AI will just be able to recognize based on trends on the internet and stuff, like what will be popular and, and, and then become the tastemakers. You know, this actually... I like this, and I'll explain to you why. Because this is just talking about pop songs. So that's saying that pop songs can be, which are heavily computerized. Yeah. Pop songs are in some way not really human. And so this AI can be like, hey, we can figure out the the, the math behind why that song is popular and mm -hmm. with the computers behind it with like an independent artist or somebody who's doing something truly original and would the AI have a harder time to recognize, well, that is not in my pattern recognition of like that yeah. people, but in the background of people's minds, that will be popular given whatever circumstances. And then that kind of puts up, comes up on the scene independently of whatever AI is recognizing is like going right. to be the, so this actually so you, makes you me, think this could be a renaissance. I think this might make people not like pop songs anymore. That's or what at I least was think say. about it more. I was listening to a podcast this very week that was talking about uh, the music that we grew up listening to and the bands and stuff. And I remember thinking, you know, back then, the only way you heard about music was because a friend, like they were talking about the band Hello Goodbye. Yeah. And I remember, oh yeah, Brooke. Brooke yeah. told us about Hello Goodbye. Mm -hmm. And like every band that you listened to back in the day, you can just say, oh yeah, so-and-so told me about that band. Oh, or yeah. I went to a concert and they opened for that band. But now I've, it's it's like, it's, it's, it's such a double-edged sword because people have more access to creating music now, but at mm -hmm. the same time, it, it, it all feels so like auto-generated. It's like, well, hopefully I get recommended on Spotify. Yeah, or, hopefully the AI on Spotify can recognize that I sound like right. this person and then I'll, it's just a whole game. That's why a lot of people put out those singles trying to right it's just a whole game get, yeah. yeah it's a game and i hate that i really hate the way that it, we've moved from from albums to singles because so now you just put out one song. but i i get it because it's like every time you put out a single it's pushing people back to your artist page to keep listening and listening so to i show understand the, like yeah, if, yeah. if i was in a band or an artist or whatever i would do the same thing because it makes sense it's just kind of a bummer because i think that the the quality of the music is going to suffer over time because mm -hmm. it's like yeah that was a good song but it makes sense within like a, a greater yeah uh, a, a larger whole and it's not really that way now ever now every song has to stand completely on its own so it has to be like the most catchy thing yeah whereas before it was like you know what i used to not like this song as much but now i kind of recognize where it sits on the rest of the album and now it's my favorite song on yeah the whole CD. so many times that's happened yeah i think that this is really i really do think this is a good thing because listening to pop music truly is just an addiction yeah it's not even good for you so i will say that objectively <laughs> As it's just a truth of the universe. I don't think that it's good for you. Do I listen to it? Yes. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's good for me. I think that anything that happens that makes a human think that a human that's doing a bad habit to make them just think about the habit. Yeah. Why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. Or like for smokers, a big tip that I've read to help smokers is to just when you have the urge to smoke, to just think, to just notice that you have that yeah, urge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or if you're looking at your phone, just have, just notice that why, oh, why, what made me want to look at my phone now? Right. And that kind of helps you to really break that habit. So I think maybe if people are like, wait, pop songs can just be picked out and generated right. by AI. Why do right. I listen to pop songs? Right. What makes me want to do that? It'll maybe it'll surprise me if one day there are like actual AI generated songs and artists and yeah. people actually like enjoy it. And if that's the case, then, then kind of my thesis about humanity might not be true. You think that they will enjoy it or will? I don't, I don't think they will. I'm saying that if they do, then I'll have to re yeah, I'll have to reassess my view of things <laughs> because I think that's finally the bridge too far. That's the red line because at yeah. least when it's like, Oh, I can follow this artist and sure they're making the most like generic pop, 
at least it's a human. By a computer. At least it's a human. But at the point where it, there's just no human touch anymore, and the the recom- it's being recommended to you not even by people, but by mm-hmm. there's like no humanity to well, it. Right? At like, all. would you watch a Mr. Beast video if it was animated and it was, or if 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 it was animated but it looked exactly like people and you knew that they were all fake? Right. No. And he was doing the exact same stuff. You wouldn't watch it. Right. Yeah. I don't maybe, know. maybe these would... kids. I don't know, but I I I hope not. What's the next thing on the list? I'm... Well, Jordan, you know, people are always asking us when are you going to talk about the conspiracy theories. Oh. I think this is finally the week where we introduce the conspiracy theory segment. We've been putting it off. Let's just get Here to we it. Go. Jordan, one of the greatest websites of our time, teenvogue.com, okay, a real bastion of intelligence and hope for humanity, has an article called The 11 Most Popular conspiracy theories in recent history. And I just thought, okay, these are these are the normie conspiracy theories. Do you want to go through these and figure out, like, do we agree with any of them? Oftentimes, they actually say the really true ones because they're trying to make you feel like they're not true. That's what I want to talk about, okay? Are you ready for this? Is everybody ready to play at home? Let's find out. How crazy are you? Number 11. There's a hidden chamber filled with government secrets behind Mount Rushmore. See, this isn't true. What they're doing here is they're throwing in these really stupid ones to then throw off the really true ones. That's ex- that's what I wrote too. I said this is like this is a psyop. It's just like yeah, there's no, this other isn't true. real stuff going on. But there is a small room behind Mount Rushmore and it was something that the creator of Mount Rushmore was going to add, but then he died before it happened or it just didn't work out so there's there's like a door that leads to nothing basically number 10 area 51 is home to lots of aliens and government secrets yeah you see how they phrase this lots of aliens which is stupid obviously but in parentheses and government secrets yeah the government secrets i'm sure of right but the aliens i don't think that they have an actual alien there do i think that they have some kind of ufo type thing there whatever an unidentified object yeah they probably have something there I don't know if it's from aliens or just from another country, but... I would put this in the same category as the Mount Rushmore thing, where it's just like, hey, if we can keep them talking about aliens, yeah. we can have them not thinking about other stuff that we're doing. <laughs> well, I'm not a big fan of the whole alien thing, but I do think that something did happen at Area 51, okay. and I don't know what it was. I don't think anybody does, but I... I do believe that something happened there that they did try to keep secret. It might be something that's not that big of a deal, but it just got overblown. But it is a government secret. If this had happened now, I would believe it more. But the fact that it happened before, like, the internet and all this, and and it it, it spread and it was a conspiracy theory, it's like, okay, well, the only way that a thing like that gets spread is if, like, it's being promoted. Yeah. You know what I mean? Back in the day, like, how did you find out about stuff? It was in your newspaper. It was on the news, and there were, like, three channels. So, I I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if you're right, but I also, like, my tendency is just to be like, eh. I also just remember there being, like, an Unsolved Mysteries episode about Area 51 when I was a kid. And and I remember just thinking, this must all be fake, because why? if this was real, why is it on TV? Now, this is where we get down to the nitty-gritty. Can we say this word anymore? Yeah, you can. The CV night, we can't? Okay, is population control. It sure did control the population, didn't it? Yeah. But I think this is talking about... uh, It was was, was, was put out there to to kill everybody, to make there be less people in the world. Yeah, and, and a lot of people use the Bill Gates quote where he was talking about... They really... I mean, look, I don't like Bill Gates, but they took his quote way out of context of what he was saying uh-huh. to to say that he was basically going to kill a bunch of people which okay if you believe that he wants to do that okay but like the the quote was taken out of context in the in the scope of like the entirety of what he was saying and they just nitpicked that little yeah. quote out the amount of power that we have given this small group of people just in society if they wanted to to off us they could do it like, it wouldn't be that hard, I, I don't feel like. So the fact that we're still here means that they're... they're that it's not... You know what I mean? Yeah, th- there would have been an easier way to go about doing that. Now, maybe maybe there was something... Up, I don't... Like, you see what I mean? They're, they're kind of giving you something that might so be like true. A little, yeah. But to throw you off that, yeah, it was used literally as population control, like yeah. you were saying. But, you know, also maybe... If this happened, if it truly was, 
uh, created mm-hmm. and and unleashed, and then they have the the vaccines or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> then they make billions and billions. So, like, I don't know. I mean, it happened. Easy way to get rich. If somebody got rich. It wasn't us. All right, Jordan, take it away. The Earth is actually flat. But this is the first one that I would, I wouldn't even, uh, yeah, entertain as like, yeah. Uh, but I mean, I'm glad that it's on the list because it, it is here. <laughs> they're out, you know, they're out there trying to make a, this work. No, there's a lot of people that believe that. That's what I'm saying. They're trying. There's a lot to of get, people. Yeah. All right, uh, we can't actually read this whole one, but uh, top Democrats are behind a blankety uh, blank. Uh, 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 something that deals with youngins. Yeah. Uh, is it true? I mean, see, here, here's the thing. They're trying to, they're trying to segue you to just think that this is like a Democrat Republican thing when it's like. What if it's That's a whole That's exactly thing. what I said. I was like, it's it's false because it's all of them. It's the yeah, Republicans, it, right. too. <laughs> if, it, if this is real, it's everybody. It's not just the Democrats. Look, I, I, I... Okay, listen. All right, <laughs> just listen for a second. I, I don't think I speak just for myself when I say when Jeffrey Epstein was killed in that cell and they didn't have the footage, yeah. I just said, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I'm not saying what I believe is true. I'm just saying that I know you're full of... <laughs> <laughs> but there's no, like, uh, not too many questions. Nobody seems to really care right. nobody, too nobody much. Right, nobody worries about getting to the bottom of that. It's yeah. just like, all right. I, and then they throw out all these random little things to make you think that that it's crazy that anybody would think that, <laughs> that one of the biggest industries in the world... Uh, which is this child stuff it, right that the government that different high-end people who have nothing better to do with their lives at some point when they right. just have everything that they want are into that yeah like I mean come on mass shootings like Sandy Hook were false flags I wouldn't say this is what I always look at when something happens who does it benefit and or any kind of news story literally yeah any I mean that's just 101 mm-hmm who does this benefit? I don't want there to say are, they're false flags, though, but I'm just saying no, that I, but I, I think, they're used. Right. That's what I was going to say. I think that there are certain kinds of news stories get a lot of clicks. Bad actors are happy to use things going on in the news to drive clicks to their websites, and they're they're giving the person what they want by giving them the notoriety. And stuff. Yeah. Yeah. 9-11 was an inside job, Jordan. Are we? What are we going to say about this? <laughs> uh, I will say what I've always believed, which is that I don't think it was an inside job. I, but I, I would not be surprised to find out that it was something that was just allowed to happen. Yeah, I don't something think, that was. I don't think that's super controversial take. Well, let's put it this way. I mean, I think about this in the same way that I think about the mass shootings. Like, if if somebody who wanted more gun control and wanted more of this stuff, if if there was really some sicko who was like. Hey, there's some, we know that this one kid is kind of searching some bad stuff. He's, but we're not going to really look at and really look too much into it. Uh Oh, it happened. Well, look, man, it looks a terrible thing. It's like, yeah, well, maybe you could have stopped it. You know, that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking about with the 9-11 thing. But then there is some weird stuff. If you look at the one building that, that came down, that, um, kind of, came down due to fire instead of on its own it it, it really did look like we've all seen loose change back in the day we all watched that movie you know there there was a time uh where conspiracy theories were it was more of a lefty thing uh to to be a conspiracy theorist about this stuff whereas that's kind of now the uh the the right wing people are the conspiracy theorists and i don't want to speak too much out of turn but with that one building that came down i think it was building 11 i can't really remember but uh it wasn't or something building yeah i can't remember but anyways it wasn't hit by any thing it literally the documentation says that it, it came down a steel structure came down because of a fire and that is that had never happened before on the face of the planet mm. and they, it's, it's actually reported that that's what caused it to collapse and so if that was if if that really is true that that happened the building codes or some kind of structural like uh planning would have to then change or be modified on most all buildings that exist and that exist after that but nothing happened from it it was just like oh yeah that was just an anomaly that happened and nothing happened at- so again maybe it was something that strange was strange stuff to- strange stuff it was just questions i'm sure the the government was was very disappointed to have to 
usurped so much authority after that and the Patriot <laughs> oh, yeah. Act and yeah. the wars and all that. It was very hard for them to have to take all that extra authority. Right. Princess Diana's death was no accident. Uh, I haven't looked up much. Of, I know about this, but I don't know about it. I think the incentives were there. I mean, the, the royal family to this day is still paying for Princess Diana because her kid, uh, whatever his name is, the one that... The royal family doesn't like that's over here making Netflix stuff. Oh, that's yeah. your son? Yeah. The royal family didn't like her. And no. she's got these kids, and now this one kid is just causing them so much drama. So, I, you know, uh, I, I'm just saying the incentives were there. Okay, <laughs> I got you. Jordan, did we go to the moon? I go back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that we did, but I think that they t see the, the thing is everyone's like, oh, you know, they the the pictures were faked and all this stuff. There's been some times where you watch something and they'll say something about the moon landing, like, oh, this is so stupid that right. some people and, or right. whatever, and it's like, yeah, that's weird. If it's yeah. so ridiculous, why are you even bringing it up? Yeah, there's lots of ridiculous things people say that is just like, yeah, why, why would we talk about that? So, that's the only thing yeah. that makes me think perhaps it it didn't really happen is that there's still like bring attention to it. I don't even take much stock into the fact that some of the pictures were doctored, which they were. They were just doing that to try and make it look more grand because the United States beat Russia in the, mm -hmm. in the, you know, getting there. So it was like just trying to hype it up. But again, I mean, they were trying to beat another country at something faster than, than they could do. And maybe, I mean, again, are the incentives there to lie that right. you did it? Right. But it is weird that Russia doesn't just accepts it. I don't know. Like, I never hear anything coming out of Russia like, no, they faked it, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. That's the other thing that makes they me They were told to be quiet. Oh, is that what it does? Yeah. Uh, they yeah, said, okay. look, you just, we won. <laughs> and shut you up. shut up about it. <laughs> the CIA had a hand in JFK's assassination. Oh, they, they did it. It was them. <laughs> yeah. The, the, how many people don't believe that they at least had a hand right. in it, even if they didn't pull the trigger? Like, I don't that know. They, they, I feel I like know. that's becoming way more accepted. I mean, look, at the point when his uh, brother got killed, too, by another lone assassin, it's just like, okay, come on. Prayers up for RFK out there. Myths about the Holocaust, just in general. There are swaths of the population that don't believe that the Holocaust happened or they believe the death toll was enormously inflated. One 2014 survey coordinated by the ADL of more than 50,000 people across 100 countries found that only 30% of respondents thought historical accounts of the Holocaust were accurate. Now, look, I mean, what are you what are you saying there? Like, if you pulled me and said, hey, do you believe every single thing that the government tells you about the most recent war? I would be like, no. Yeah, it, well, that but you'd have to preface it with, with the most recent war that makes us look like gods. Right. <laughs> do you trust every statistic right. that we give you? It's like, look, I understand that a lot of horrible things happen and millions of people died. Are you asking if I believe that you might want to fudge some numbers a little bit sometimes in some aspect of war to right. make you look better right. or make I, some, you know what I mean? I, I, I don't I get, know. Yeah, I guess my point is that like, I, I feel like you can uh, recognize that this was a real thing that happened and also not believe the government or be yeah. skeptical of the government. Right. If somebody, I'm not saying that, that, that the number is wrong, but yeah, if somebody called me on the phone and was like, do you believe everything right. that we say? It's like, why are you asking me this? <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't Bye. Bye. Like, so I understand the 30% thing, I guess. I don't want it to sound like I'm saying I don't think that 6 million Jewish people died. Right. Did I, did, did that, I say that? No. Did I, I, like I think we made it clear. Okay, good. Hey, I'll thing. trim this <laughs> okay. so precisely. <laughs> We will look Government like saints. Bad saints. <laughs> Josh Jordan. <laughs> Whew, okay, we got through that. Finally. Finally, it gave me some hope. <laughs> Jordan, tell me about what gave you hope this week. Please. Bathroom book. Two words. So, Josh, I've been going through this thing in my life where I'm like, why? It's not even, like, people, they, they get so stressed out about the, the, the screen time that they have. That's true. My thing is, okay, it's not just the screen time. It's how much time do you think about that oh, I really shouldn't pick up my phone. Mm. That could be time that you might have an epiphany about a creation you're wanting to do of a video you want to make, a That's book right. you want to write. Like We are so focused on the act of 
don't pick up my phone. This is how infiltrating it is to our minds that we're always thinking I shouldn't look at my phone. Or right. it, the phone, is, even if you're not touching it, it's just in the back of your mind. Mm -hmm. I am not going to touch it. I, maybe I should. That's what's like back in the day, we didn't have that. So like empty time was time where you were thinking about what you were going to do, not just like your phone. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. So anyways, my new thing is I'm going back to the old days, bathroom books. Bathroom book. Going, think about how many times you go to the bathroom during the day that you pull out your phone, you're thinking about your phone for that amount of time, then when you go back to what you're doing in your life, it's like you're not focused as much. That's right. So what I did, Josh, was I put a bathroom book in the bathroom. So whenever I'm in the bathroom, I don't take my phone and I just, if, if I want to look at something, I'll look at this book. And it's about birds and it's about the different kinds of birds in North America. And so I just look at that a little bit. And any time that you can spend focused on something instead of just like whatever, whatever AI is going to throw in my face right now. Like if you can direct what you're looking at, that's practice to do that in your everyday life when it's something important. So it's like the, your bathroom time and all these other times where you just think, oh, it doesn't matter. This is a great time to look at my phone because then I don't, you know, I, at least I'm doing good because I'm not looking at my phone at some other time. It's still messing you up anyways. Yeah. So the bathroom book. We were duped to think it was just the phone, but it's the thoughts about the phone that's taking away from our other thoughts. Yeah. So that's I don't good. really know how that was, a. it gave me hope, but it gave me hope that I, that I connected that and put a book in the bathroom. Right. There you go. Jordan, for me, I was thinking this week, I, I heard someone talking and uh, I've just been thinking about this idea of asking what instead of why when talking to what people instead of why what is more meant to inquire about like how how can we rectify this whereas why is more like pointed like why this did is how you it should do be this? yeah this is how it should be why did you do it this way and i think that there are situations like if we're in the middle of like like if you're if i'm trying to learn something from you and i say hey why did you do that that way Mm -hmm. Because I actually genuinely want to learn, but obviously, like in, in most situations, yeah, why? Yeah, you almost can't say why in a way that's not a direct towards somebody, right? But you can say, "What can we do?" Right? But why? I get, could you say that with why? Even if you why, say, why, why are we, we doing it this way? <laughs> that's directed towards them, right? Still it's in a, some there's, way. It, and it might not. It just might be within the the, the current like cultural language. Yeah, yeah. That. It feels that way, just the way that we all communicate. But that, so it might hmm. not always be that way. That might not always be true of the question why. But at least the current way that it is stated, it feels like a like there's an implicit. You're doing something dumb. Please explain to me why you chose to do yeah. something dumb, so I can correct you. Versus what, which is, hey, I don't know what's happening. Can yeah. you explain it to me? So anyways, just a small little thing that I've been thinking about this week in terms of the way I communicate with, with others. And I just thought that was interesting. It gave me hope. That is. All right. In the time it took us to get between those segments, Jordan realized a grave error he made. Well, I updated the Google Doc, our precious Google Doc, but Josh had already printed out the, the thing. Sorry. So it was, why did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> what can we do to fix this? <laughs> so, scratch that, reverse it. Bathroom book is an, is a recommended. <laughs> so that's that's how that was supposed. Tell to be us done. what should give us hope. So recommend some hope for us this week. So I, the hope that I'm going to give to you guys is just watch this video. You know, I'm just at Goodwill. I come back home and look what I find. Wally. -E. Narrowly escapes death. I'm giving him a treat for the heroism. This is just insane. He survived. Man, that's like uh, that's like on Lost when Charlie keeps uh, just narrowly escaping death, and Desmond's like, "You're gonna die, Wally." <laughs> I don't know how to tell you. Yeah, uh, it was wow, just crazy. holy cow! I came home and there had been a. A huge storm and then i it wasn't bad where i was came home and wally had i mean he when i went in there wally was asleep like just he seemed terrified and i i like was like wally i didn't know i was gonna turn the corner is he had been squished or just hurt and what am i gonna do and he was just like and so i petted him and it like took him a second to wake up and he like like looked around and you know rabbits can uh, be literally scared to death 
Yeah. They can just die because they get... So I was like, man, he's dead. He yeah. didn't even get hit and he's dead. Yeah. But he, he survived. So uh, that wow. gave me hope. And we all recommend <laughs> that you give that <laughs> rabbit a medal for what he yes, did. Yes, yes. Okay? And I did. I gave him a piece of celery. I recommend that everybody journal. And I know I've talked about this before, but I've never talked about it on the podcast. That's Jordan, true. I have journaled eight hundred days in a row now i have days. journaled nearly every day of elliot's life uh, i started my journal two weeks after he was born and when our new baby comes i'll i'll have it'll be so exciting because i'll get to journal on the day that he's born so i'll all these things about isaac and elliot's date of birth that are just like a blur to me now i'll remember all these details because i'm going to write them down yeah. The day that it happens. And it's been so good. It, 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 because I've been doing it for so long now, there have been times where Kelly and I are like, what What did we do for your birthday last year? I don't know. Let me go check. And I'll just read I'll just read my post. Right oh, yeah. And we did this thing. Oh, remember? We tried hmm. to get ice cream, but it was closed and blah, blah, blah. All these things that in the, when you're in the middle of it, you think, I'm not going to forget that. Why do I need to write it down? You will f you forget everything. Yeah. You forget everything. I, I wonder if, because I journaled for like two years straight, mm -hmm. I think. And at some point, I was like, what am I benefiting from this? Because mm -hmm. I was getting stressed out by doing it. Yeah. And then I thought, you know, if I ever have children, this yeah. will probably yeah. make more sense. Yeah. But right now, like, I, and so I just I, stopped. I think if I didn't have kids, I would have done the same thing because it's like, okay, I got the benefit of this. Like, I feel more organized in my life. And now it's just a stress to me. Because there yeah. have been times where it's stressful. And a lot of times I'll, like, I'll, I'll write my post for yesterday the next day yeah 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 uh and i'll just say hey this you know i'm gonna try to remember what happened yesterday but i always try it around the same day because otherwise i don't know i try not to be legalistic i know about it. no i'm the was the exact same way so i totally like, understand because part of it too is that well i've i've kept such good notes of everything for almost three years now yeah uh i, I can't just stop now i have to stay this detail so I I, i've just tried to give myself grace that sometimes i yeah you know it's, it's not going to be that way um but it is i mean it is just so helpful i was thinking the other day about like what what if i stopped journaling and i was like i don't even know how i would organize my thoughts anymore if i that was why i started because i just like i feel so discombobulated in my head i just yeah. need to start writing things down yeah oh so That's anyways cool. Do you do it on the computer? Or do you I do, do it. it. There's an app called okay. Day One that I've used, and you can even get your your uh, journals printed and stuff. I I, I oh, want to really? print the books. I, yeah, it takes like for the amount that I do it, it's like two books equals a year. Yeah, so it's oh, going to okay. be kind of expensive when I do it, but eventually I will print them. How much is a book? Because I would I actually physically bought uh, the books and did it, and they were right. huge. Yeah, I, um, but they weren't the they weren't are, cheap. So the books, I think they were like. Forty dollars each or so. Okay. Yeah. And I actually I mean, that's just, not too far off of journals. I just started getting the. I, I just started finally paying for the premium thing, which is like three dollars a month or whatever, and yeah. you can add more than one picture to your post. And oh, cool. And oh, you, so you, the journals can have pictures in it if you get them printed. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's so pretty, it's pretty cool. cool. That's a cool. And feature. you can you can even say on the journal you can say hey just print the pictures or hey just print the text or you know whatever. So yeah. you can do all kinds of stuff and you can tag the post. That's so, awesome. Yeah, it's great. Anyways, day one, great recommendation. I recommend it. Gave me hope. Good news. <laughs> Good news. <laughs> another day, another episode nine done in the books. Thank you guys so much. We always have such a great time. Josh was uh, listening to the podcast I edited last week, and Josh said that Kelly uh, commented that you guys just seem like you have such a great time filming the podcast when you guys were listening to it together. Correct. So uh, that gave me hope. Good news. Good news. Recommended, Recommended. listening. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, so much. We'll see you. Hey, ne episode 10. Big episode. Look, Mia knows. Mia knows. We didn't when even the say was... bye. She yeah. just knew. She knows when I talk like this that the episode's almost over. All right, That's everybody. That's so weird. We'll see ya. Bye Peace bye. Out.